It's a reunion in Sacramento. De'Aaron Fox, Malik Monk, the old Kentucky Wildcat backcourt now swapping the blue for the purple here in Sacramento. The Kings have reportedly agreed to a two-year $19 million deal with free agent Malik Monk. We'll react to that. Other free agency signings around the NBA. And I have some information for you on the future of Kings big man Rashawn Holmes. It's all right here on Locked on Kings. You are Locked On Kings, your daily Sacramento Kings podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is that time, time for another episode of Locked On Kings. Hello and welcome to Locked On Kings, your podcast hub for Sacramento Kings coverage all regular season and of course all off season. My name is Matt George. I have the privilege of being your host here. I'm a sports producer and reporter at ABC 10 News in Sacramento. And Malik Monk was a name on my radar. It was a name on a lot of your radars. I saw his name brought up time and time again in my uh, YouTube comment section, saw it in the emails, saw it on Twitter doesn't surprise me at all that the vocal minority, at least that I get to interact with, is very happy by this Malik Monk signing. I don't know if you can hear my son, Arthur, in the background already celebrating uh, this signing. So if you hear some squeals, it's because he's just as happy as maybe some of you are. And it wouldn't surprise me at all if the majority of Sacramento Kings fandom is really excited by this move. It makes a lot of sense in a lot of different ways. Before I dive into why it makes sense, why it's a good move, at least in my mind, and the questions surrounding the move, I have to give a little credit to my guy, Damian Barling, friend here of the Locked on Kings podcast from ESPN 1320, the D-Lo and D-Lo and KC. Damian Barling was the one who broke the news that the Sacramento Kings were bringing in Malik Monk. Now, Damian and I, we had heard whispers a little bit. We had heard the possibility, or at least that there was significant interest for the Kings in bringing in Monk, but congratulations to D'Lo. He works hard to uh, to get the information and make sure he get things right. So to be able to break that news, that's fantastic. This was a great week overall and has been a great week for local journalism here in Sacramento for James Ham uh, to break the news that Dante DiVincenzo has not been issued the qualifying offer to Damian Barling, uh, breaking the Malik Monk signing news. Uh, anytime that local journalists, even if it's not myself, anytime local journalists can break local sports stories instead of national journalists breaking local sports stories because believe me I'm one of the people that are that is on the ground here in Sacramento covering this Kings team every day there are great people like James like Damian and so many more that put their head down or in the trenches doing this job and yes it's a fun job yes it's a job that we all enjoy doing the Sacramento Kings sometimes make it very difficult not just uh, with them being a bad basketball team but sometimes the access or the the doors that are closed that we're trying to push open and go through but overall it's always a good thing, always a good thing for local journalism uh, to shine through. So congratulations to D'Lo, congratulations to James Ham. Had to make sure to say that here on Locked on Kings. Now let's dive into this deal. Why does this move make sense? Well, simply put, the Sacramento Kings need shooting. They need floor spacing. That's what Malik Monk does. Malik Monk, Monk spaces the floor, but on, on top of that, it's not just a, he's un, only a shooter. That's not the case at all. Malik is very athletic, is a capable uh, rim attacker, uh, is someone who not necessarily known for his defense. And the Kings backcourt, once again, is going to have significant defensive questions. What else is new? We'll dive into the defensive concerns for that to, uh, duo and the team as a whole in a little bit. But since the Kings traded uh, Buddy Heald, their shooting plummeted. Even if Buddy Heald took a lot of bad shots at time to time and, and drove us nuts with his shot volume and shot selection. He was still above and beyond the best shooter the Kings had, arguably the best shooter in Sacramento Kings history. And the Kings had yet to replace that. And it was important for them to address that issue, especially when their two best players in De'Aaron Fox and DeMontis Sabonis aren't necessarily known for their three-point shot. Now, we know Fox and Sabonis are both working on that part of their game. Uh, you can see a ton of videos of uh, DeMontis Sabonis and the work that he is putting in on improving that outside shot. And if he could get that into the high 30s uh, percentage-wise, that could make a massive difference for his game and the success of the Kings' offense. But if you're going to have two players, your two best players, who are more known for scoring in and around the paint, or at least inside the three-point arc. You need three other guys out there with them a majority of the time who can space the floor and knock down that shot If to, if nothing else, give them room to work. Malik Monk, 
checks that box right away. Coming off of a really impressive season, his best season of his career with the Los Angeles Lakers. He was a very uh, reasonably uh, priced signing in Los Angeles and averaged just shy of 14 points per game. He uh, played in 76 games, started in 37 of them for the Lakers, shot 47% from the field, 39% from three-point range. The second half of the season, he was basically over 40%. uh, And that's with, again, a high volume of threes. He shot 5.8, so just just shy of six three-pointers per game and made around two and a half of them per game. Uh, Also is a pretty good, pretty solid free throw shooter at 79%, got to the line uh, one and a half times per game. That's a number that, of course, the Kings would love to have go up. But again, Monk, as capable as he is athletically to attack the basket, he is going to primarily be a perimeter threat for Sacramento offensively. But Malik's athleticness, athletic ability, his speed also makes him a weapon for Sacramento in transition, where I believe, I don't know Mike Brown's offensive system yet, but it makes sense with De'Aaron Fox being the best player on your team and the uh, the, the leader of the team. It makes sense that you're going to want to get out in transition and Fox needs speedy backcourt partners in order to execute that as well as the Kings need to execute it. Malik Monk fits that bill to a T as well. Plus, like I said, these guys already know each other. Now it's been a while since they played together. They only played together uh, for a year at Kentucky, but are of course good friends, very familiar with one another. You can see uh, the reaction. I actually tweeted it out. Haven't seen any reaction from De'Aaron Fox yet, but Malik Monk on Instagram posted uh, to his story a a screenshot of the news that he was joining the Kings with a bunch of eye emojis. So we have to believe that he's very excited uh, to be joining De'Aaron. The two of them had a, a clear bond in Kentucky. And if you haven't gone down a rabbit hole before of looking back at just plays and connections and, and highlights of that Fox and Monk backcourt, man, they made a lot of noise. There's a reason why during that 2017 NBA draft that I wanted the Sacramento Kings to take Malik Monk with the 10th pick that they had. That was New Orleans pick, remember, that they got uh, in the DeMarcus Cousins trade. Of course, they ended up trading that for two other picks that became, I think, Harry Giles and Justin Jackson. We know how that worked out. The Kings, of course, could have taken Donovan Mitchell at that spot as well. We don't need, this is a positive day. We don't need to, we don't need to revisit that. I'm happy De'Aaron Fox and Malik Monk have reunited here in Sacramento. But Malik Monk does not solve the Sacramento Kings problems. He solves their shooting issue, or at least addresses their shooting issue. Malik Monk made the Sacramento Kings better. Malik Monk, I would argue, is a better fit next to De'Aaron Fox than Dante DiVincenzo would have been. However, Dante DiVincenzo is a significantly better defender than Malik Monk, and it's not even close. Not even close. I think Malik, just like Fox, has the capability of being a good defender. Solid defender. Not great. Not a guy that you really lean on for defensive spots. Although I think De'Aaron is capable of that when he really wants to put in that effort defensively. But there's no reason to me why a De'Aaron Fox and Malik Monk backcourt can't become the backcourt of at least a team, a, a good team defense. Not... Good individual defenders are great individual defenders again, but a good team defense, I believe Malik Monk and De'Aaron Fox are both athletic and smart enough to fit whatever defensive role that they're going to have in Mike Brown's system. But defensively, there absolutely is a concern with that backcourt, 100%. So things might not change too much on the defensive front for the Kings with that starting backcourt, unless those two really commit on that end. And who knows, maybe Mike Brown is going to be capable of, of inspiring that kind of defensive effort from them. And this is why I think that there still is a very, very, very good chance that this training camp is going to be what decides that starting two guard spot going forward. I think the the two guard spot in training camp is going to be the most interesting thing to watch from the Sacramento Kings. Because as of right now, the expectation is that Dante DiVincenzo is not going to be back. In fact, I would be shocked at this point. I would have been shocked three days ago if Dante DiVincenzo wasn't back. Now I'm sure I would be shocked if he was back. Malik Monk, I think as of right now, and maybe you feel differently. I think Malik Monk is the favorite to be the starting two guard for the Kings. He's definitely capable of it, but I think Davion Mitchell has a very legitimate shot. I think Terrence Davis has a very legitimate shot. I guess I should include Justin Holiday in the conversation just because he was the starter for the Kings at the end of last season, although I don't think he has that legitimate of a shot. 
I think Justin Holiday could still be a good rotational piece off the bench for the Sacramento Kings. If nothing else, him being an expiring contract is valuable, maybe at the trade deadline or heck, maybe even in the trade this offseason. But as of right now, I think Malik Monk is the favorite to become the starting two guard. But if Davion Mitchell can provide the offensive burst that we saw at the end of the season, maybe not in as high of a volume, especially if he's playing next to De'Aaron Fox, but also provides that nightly defense that the Kings can expect. I, I, I like that idea too. Also, I want to backtrack real quick. Malik Monk signed to a two-year, $19 million deal. I believe the Kings still have, I read this somewhere, it might have been Keith Smith. The Kings, I think, still have enough money or enough cap space to sign a four-year minimum deal. So the Kings might not be done at this point in time. And I'm, I'm refreshing Twitter as we speak to make sure I don't miss anything. At this point in time, this is the only move and the main move that the Sacramento Kings are going to make in free agency. But maybe they add another free agent. Maybe they add a backup point guard with the expectation that Davion Mitchell could become the start, starting two guard. Maybe they look for more wing depth, which I think is where the Kings are probably going to look to spend more monies to find a better backup three or maybe another backup four. Who knows? And I do have information for you on Rashawn Holmes that I'm going to be sharing in the next segment. Information that I learned uh, earlier today about his future with the Kings and his uh, his trade market value. But financially, the Kings still have a little bit of wiggle room. They're not done. Plus, you still hear rumblings that they are involved still in conversations with the Atlanta Hawks involving a John Collins trade. So a lot can still happen. And I think a lot still needs to happen. Again, Malik Monk is a good signing for the Sacramento Kings. Malik Monk makes the Sacramento Kings a better team, makes the Sacramento Kings definitely a better offensive team. Plus you like the chemistry and the reunion of De'Aaron Fox and Malik Monk together, but the Kings still have a long way to go if they're going to establish themselves as a perennial playoff contender. Not just play in, which as of right now, I'd still say the best route for the Sacramento Kings to make the playoffs next year is through the play in, but I don't think that's good enough. I don't think that's good enough at all because that was the route for the Sacramento Kings last year when the West was worse than I think it's going to be this year and the Kings still didn't make it. The Kings need to shoot for a fifth or sixth seed at worst. And if they come up short, maybe that's a seventh or eighth seed that they then at least get to host a play-in game inside the Golden 1 Center. If nothing else, at least we'll get a little bit of postseason basketball. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you, Doko and the Golden 1 Center would be popping for that one game like the Kings were in the NBA Finals. I really hope we get to experience that. Hell, screw that. I hope we get to experience an actual legitimate playoff series where games three and four are in Sacramento. And even if the Kings are down 0-2 heading into Sacramento, you best believe that's going to be a party getting ahead of myself a little bit. That's exciting. In order to accomplish that, the Kings need to do more than just adding Malik Monk and Keegan Murray this offseason and losing Dante DiVincenzo. Speaking of losing, the Kings also lost Damian Jones, which I think is a pretty significant deal. I like Damian Jones a lot. He went to the Los Angeles Lakers. I'll talk a little bit about that uh, and other minor to significant moves around the NBA. But coming up next, I'm going to tell you what I've heard about Rashawn Holmes, his market value, and his future with the Sacramento Kings. I'll tell you more about that after I tell you about a great sponsor of the Locked on Kings podcast, Arcade One Up. Boom shakalaka. We have big news. The one, the only NBA jam is back. Arcade One Up, the leader in home retro arcade games, is not only bringing the best game ever back, they've made it bigger and better than ever with a Shaq edition machine. People are obsessed with NBA Jam, and I'm thrilled to tell Locked On Kings listeners that you can once again play hoops with NBA legends in this arcade classic. You can jump clear across the court, set the ball on fire, in one of the first sports games ever to feature real and digitalized NBA licensed teams. No fouls, no free throws, and no quarters required. You can compete with your friends and family through an all-new Wi-Fi leaderboard, making you more connected than ever. Pre-order right now from ArcadeOneUp.com for an estimated early September ship date. Arcade One Up is the leader in uh, at-home 
arcade retro systems that start at just $399. And of course, it's not just NBA Jam. They have Golden T. Uh, they have Mortal Kombat, Pac-Man, so many more. And right now, they are giving away copies or rather machines, NBA Jam Shack Edition machines, three of them to Locked On Kings listeners. I'm really hoping that a Locked On Kings, or I should say they're giving away three to Locked on podcast listeners. I'm hoping at least one of them. Let's shoot for two. Let's shoot for all three. Go to Locked on Kings listeners. And the way you can enter is go to arcade1up.com. That's arcade the number one up.com slash locked on. You have until July 8th to enter to win an NBA Jam Shack Edition console. I said coming into this offseason that I believe Rashawn Holmes has a significant trade market or at least has trade market value, even with the struggles that he had last season, even with the off-court issues and family issues that he dealt with, I believed, and I still believe, that Rashawn Holmes has value. But I'll tell you what I heard today, a little bit earlier today, had a conversation with a a source of mine inside the, the Kings organization, and they let me know that as of right now, there is not much interest in Rashawn Holmes on the open market. Not much interest at all, which initially to me was concerning. However, I was also informed that new Kings head coach Mike Brown is actually a really big fan of Rashawn Holmes, potentially a bigger fan of Rashawn Holmes than he was of Damian Jones. And he would have no issue. Mike Brown would have no issue in keeping Rashawn Holmes on this roster and having Rashawn be a part of the Kings rotation. Now, I think it's it's safe to say with DeMontis Simonis here that Rashawn's days as the starting center here in Sacramento are done. But as of right now, the expectation is that number 22 will remain in a Kings jersey starting next season. And I honestly think a lot of people showered, uh, soured, I should say, on Rashawn over the course of this season because of his inconsistencies, because of his struggles. When the Kings brought in DeMontis Sabonis, it almost was like, to use like a, a toy story reference, like, okay, you're the old toy. Let me throw you in the bin uh, and, and, and play with this new shiny, exciting toy that I have. Rashawn still has a lot that he can add any NBA team and especially can add the Sacramento Kings. I really believe Rashawn Holmes coming off the bench can be a really key, important Sacramento weapon. And if you have a center rotation that is DeMontis Sabonis and Rashawn Holmes with what we know Rashawn can provide if he continues to play with that consistent hustle and energy and effort that we just go to expect. That's just part of who Rashawn is. That's his DNA. But if maybe you get a little less scoring from Rashawn, which you needed before, and a little more rim protection, a little more rebounding, it's hard to find a better backup center option out there on the open market right now. I think Rashawn could absolutely excel in that role. Now, of course, he wants to start. I'm sure he's not happy by the prospect of losing his full-time starting position. I'm sure he wasn't happy about it when the Kings traded for uh, DeMontis Sabonis. But I also, based on my understanding of who Rashawn is, he's going to work hard and he's going to do whatever he has to do to help his team and to try and win. That's what he cares about. That's what he's done his entire career. That's what got him to this point. Rashawn Holmes, if he doesn't have trade value or if he doesn't have a trade market, I'm not saying he doesn't have trade value. I I should clarify that. It's not that Rashawn Holmes doesn't have trade value. It's that there's not really a trade market out there for him right now. You might think that's one and the same. I interpret that differently. Rashawn Holmes is value to the Sacramento Kings. And I think Rashawn Holmes can be an absolute important, really important piece for that Kings bench rotation going forward. And we might even get glimpses at times of Rashawn Holmes at the five and DeMontis Sabonis at the four or vice versa. I have questions about spacing. I have questions about shooting, but who knows? We might see that incorporated from time to time as well. So I'm, I'm happy with this. I really am happy that Rashawn Holmes sounds like is going to remain a Sacramento King. But that also means that with the exception of Harrison Barnes, arguably their most realistic, valuable trade chip isn't as valuable or there's there's not as much interest in him as maybe the Kings would have hoped going into this offseason where they're looking to make changes. I still think it's very possible that the Kings can pull off a trade. Sounds like Harrison Barnes is going to be the bait dangled there, which also makes sense because HB is going into the final year of his contract. However, I don't know how the Kings are going to replace HB necessarily unless in this deal they're bringing in 
a established starting three or an established starting four, which I have a hard time believing that the Kings would ever move on from Harrison if they weren't getting something like that back. I still think a John Collins, Kevin Herter trade is potentially on the table, although Malik Monk being here complicates things a little bit. Maybe they bring in Kevin Herter. He and Malik compete for that starting spot. Whoever loses is the backup. Davion Mitchell is the backup point guard for De'Aaron Fox. You move Keegan Murray to the three. You have John Collins at the four. You have Mo Harkless back up Collins at the four. You have, I don't know, Terrence Davis or Justin Holiday back up Murray at the three. There are options. This Kings team still needs to improve their roster, and I'm interested to see where they go from here. But signing Malik Monk and the idea of retaining Rashawn Holmes, not that they were worried about losing him, but the idea of Rashawn Holmes sticking around, I think is a plus for this team. Absolutely a plus for this team. So let me know how you feeling about this Malik Monk signing. How you feeling about Rashawn Holmes more than likely remaining a Sacramento King? Are you disappointed about that or excited about that? Let me know at Matt George Sack on Twitter. Email me mattgeorgesports at gmail.com. Leave your thoughts in the YouTube comment section down below. I have a couple other free agency moves that have nothing to do with the Kings or a little bit to do with the Kings uh, to touch on before we wrap up this free agency episode of Locked on Kings. But I also want to tell you about another great sponsor of Locked on Kings, and you can have fun betting on free agency day right now on betonline.net, your number one source for all your betting needs and sports information. You can find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including Major League Baseball happening right now, plus so many fun prop and future bets, locate or landing destinations for Kyrie Irving, for Kevin Durant, for DeAndre Ayton. Uh, you can bet on future for the NFL. If you're an NFL fan, there's future championship odds already out for the NFL, Super Bowl winners for next year. There's already NBA championship odds out for the NBA Finals next year that you can bet on right now. BetOnline.net, they remain the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season and during the offseason. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events, including MMA, boxing, and even golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action at BetOnline, where the game starts couple pieces of news and notes from around the NBA day one of free agency. I mentioned Damian Jones leaving the Sacramento Kings. He has signed a deal with the Los Angeles Lakers. I really liked this pickup for the Lakers. I, I would have liked the pickup for whatever team Damian Jones went to or decided to go to. Damian impressed me a lot over the last couple of years in Sacramento. Definitely earned that bump up from the two-way contract to a full uh, team contract. Great young man, incredibly hard worker, I think does have a future as a very valuable role-playing big in the NBA. Would have loved for the Sacramento Kings to retain him, sounds like, with the lack of market for uh, Rashawn Holmes, that it was almost a foregone conclusion that Damian was going to move on, and maybe that's what's best for him too. I think he is going to get legitimate opportunity in Los Angeles. I think Lakers fans are going to love him, and he is a player that genuinely can help try and right that ship although they're going to need, I think, a lot more than that. However, I do like what the Lakers are doing in free agency. In addition to Damian Jones, they also got Lonnie Walker on a pretty team-friendly deal. And Lonnie Walker is a player that I would have loved the Sacramento Kings to be interested in and to try and go out and get very solid uh, wing player, good on both ends of the floor. I think a, a, just a really good pickup for the Lakers as a whole. Also, former Sacramento King Marvin Bagley uh, got paid, signed a three-year deal with the Detroit Pistons. I, I don't remember how much money. It was in the 30-something million dollars upwards of like definitely in the teens per year. Uh, a big contract for Marvin, but a contract that I, I wish him the best for. We knew the Sacramento Kings weren't going to be the one to issue him that contract. And the Marvin Bagley Sacramento Kings era has been over since the trade deadline, been over for a while. But Marvin is always going to be someone that I'm paying close attention to. And Marvin is always going to be attached to the Sacramento Kings in some way, shape or form. So I will say this, I'm wishing Marvin the absolute best. I'm glad he got paid. I hope that things work out for him in Detroit. I hope he can stay healthy over the course of his three-year deal. And this is not his last contract in the NBA. I, I would say, honestly, if things continue the way they have in his career so far, this will be the last significant payday that he gets. But I'm hoping that's not the case. Rooting for him and wishing the absolute best there with that young team in Detroit that added a couple of really nice pieces. Jaden Ivey uh, during uh, during the uh, NBA draft. They're going to be a fun league pass team, a fun team to follow 
uh, and I wish Marvin the best there. And we got the news that Kevin Durant has officially requested uh, to be traded from the Brooklyn Nets. I did a fun podcast earlier this week on why that's not going to happen in Sacramento, but what if, and then uh, just craziness like that. Not going to go into any more detail. The Sacramento Kings, I would say, have no chance of landing Kevin Durant, and that's okay, but I've been wrong about things before, and that seems a little too fantasy NBA 2K to me. Uh, but who knows? So we'll have to, of course, follow that and see where KD ends up. But I really, really enjoyed this day one of free agency for the Sacramento Kings. This might be the only major free agency move that the Kings make, although it can't be the end of the Kings offseason. If the way the roster is right now is what the Kings roll into training camp with, I have significant concerns. I still think the team got better. I still think this team is capable of making the playoffs. But you want more than capable. You want confident. You want should, not could, basically. And Malik Monk is a step closer to should, but definitely does not get you over that hump. Definitely does not get you past that line. But I'm excited for that signing. And again, I want to hear from you. Let me know your thoughts on Malik Monk, on Rashawn Holmes, your thoughts on any other free agency moves that you saw today, Damian Jones, Marvin Bagley. Reach out to me at Matt George Sack on Twitter. Email me Matt George Sports at gmail.com and leave your thoughts in the YouTube comment section down below. Of course, if anything else happens wild for the Kings tonight in free agency or tomorrow as free agency continues, any trades that go down, we'll have it covered for you on Locked on Kings as of right now. The plan tomorrow is to have Bobby Gerald back with me here, and he's going to tell us a little bit more about this uh, Sacramento Kings Summer League roster. They begin their California Classic this weekend in San Francisco. Bobby and I are going to break down this roster a little bit more, get to know names that you're familiar with, others that you have no idea, and I have no idea about. Bobby, of course, knows them all. He's just a wizard that way. So hopefully he'll uh, he'll join me, and at least he's scheduled to join me and fill us in on all of that. That's expected to be tomorrow. But again, if anything happens, any emergency podcasts or things like that, keep your eye out for that because I definitely will be uh, dropping anything that is worthwhile to discuss here with this Kings offseason as it continues. Really appreciate your support. Can't wait to have you join me on the next episode. Until then, my name is Matt George. You have been listening to Locked On Kings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network.